Greetings Duelists and welcome to another video. So uh, more legacy of this uh, destruction uh, content. Uh, here I have another duel for you guys. Uh, this set is about to have a sneak peek on the next weekend and then the week after that would be uh, when the set is legal. So we're very 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 close uh, for this set uh, to arrive and I just have another duel for you guys. So this duel is going to be a little bit different from the Lightsworn one. This is going to involve like two more roguish decks. However, I feel like you still need to learn about these decks, even though they're not as popular as the other decks that we know that could be trending the format, like Tempai Dragons and Jubel. I feel like... Uh, these other decks, if people are not aware of them, you're just going to get caught off guard and you might even start losing duels that you probably would have won if you had more knowledge of them. So uh, in the bottom, I am playing Memento. Uh, in the top, we're facing against, against Ragnarika uh, Trap Tricks. I've talked about both these decks uh, in this channel. I spoke about Memento first and how uh, some of their new cards uh, actually like really help out the theme and it just gives it more starters and gives it like a little bit more wiggle room with like their win condition. While I spoke about uh, Ragnarika being a splashable like archetype slash engine for plants, insects, and reptiles. And uh, if you saw the Ragnarika video, I've spoken about how Trap Tricks is probably like the best Rika build uh, in like my personal uh, opinion. So I figured this will be a good showcasing duel because you get to see both decks in action and just see like some interactions that you might uh, be intrigued by when seeing these decks. So without further ado, let's begin. Uh, we go first, we activate Mace. Uh, for those who don't remember, uh, I'm going to summarize each Memento effect. Uh, Maze pops herself to add a Memento card. So with Maze, we're going to add Tatsuno Shigo. We're going to activate Mementotlan. Mementotlan basically uh, gives all your Memento monsters the ability to be unresponded by spell and traps when they're attacking. Also, if a Memento monster is popped, you can special summon a lower level Memento from hand or graveyard. Uh, also, during the end phase, you get to set uh, a memento card. That also comes up. So we're doing Tatsuno Shigo's effect, and Tatsuno Shigo is going to send uh, Anguish and Gatic. So uh, there, uh, if Tatsuno Shigo was our only starter and we didn't normal summon, uh, one starting play that you can do is do this same effect, send these two monsters with the Gatic to add the Anguish to your hand, and then with Anguish you add another Memento. That being said, uh, since we already normal summoned the Maze, uh, we cannot do that play. However, we do have the Memento clan, so we can special summon both Gatic and Anguish for free. So, we're specially in both. And now both Anguish and Gatic triggers. So I'm going to uh, say right here, this was a misplay on my end. Instead of some, uh, sending Gatic from the deck, what I should have been doing is with Tatsuno Shigo's effect, I should have uh, sent Anguish and Memento Goblin and use Memento Lens effect, special summon Goblin, use Goblin's effect, and with goblins send Gatic and Memento Fusion. And then use Gatic's effect, special summon Gatic itself. And then with Gatic, grab Memento Fusion. Uh, I already did my misplay. So I'm just telling this uh, to the viewers. That way, if you are interested in this deck or are interested in combos or strategies that you can do, uh, there are more optimal plays than the plays that I'm doing right here. And this is why I made this uh, video. Because not many people are gonna know about the Memento deck. There are not many people know that this deck actually even exists. So knowing how many cool plays this deck can do and how essentially they're almost all one card combos uh, could be beneficial for you in the long run. 
So with that, let's keep going. We grab Mace. With the Anguish, we're grabbing Memento Goblin. And now we're going to use Anguish effect, and Anguish is going to special the Goblin, which is the play I mentioned earlier. Uh, we cannot do the Gatic play, like I mentioned, because we already used Gatic as effect. However, with Goblin, what we're going to do is we're going to send Mementolian Fusion, and we're going to be sending the Combined Creation. Uh, combined Creation is uh, very close to being live, because we do have a total of 5 Mementos in rotation. Uh, we have Mementolian Fusion, for those who don't know what this card is. Uh, this is a fusion spell that can fuse uh, like regular polymerization. However, if a monster was destroyed uh, this turn, this card can also work like ultimate fusion, just uh, sending materials back to uh, the deck. The other thing Mementolian Fusion does is you can banish it from the graveyard, pop a monster, and if you resolve that effect, you add a Memento Splutter Trap. Uh, another note, and this is another misplay that I did, you can actually add another copy of Mementolian Fusion. It does not restrict to not adding it. So, that being said, we have a Bone Party. Bone Party is going to summon Dark Blade. We're going to use the Mementolian Fusion. We're going to pop the Gatic, and we're going to add Cranium Burst. We're going to activate Dark Blade's effect. Dark Blade is going to summon Anguish. And now we're going to shuffle 5 back in order to special summon the moment, the combined creation. So essentially what you want to do in this deck, you kind of always want to have Anguish in your graveyard when you uh, have the combined creation. Because it makes it so any card your opponent activates can trigger the combined creation to summon Anguish. And then Anguish can either grab you Memento Goblin or Memento... Uh, Mace. Mace uh, has the effect of taking an opponent's monster, while Memento Goblin can give targeting protection to all your mementos for the turn. So, I'm sending Imperm, I'm going to end phase, Memento Goblin at triggers, and we're sending, we're setting Bone Party. So, now there is summon, their normal summon trap to Mantis, and upon their normal summon, we're going to flip the Cranium Burst, for those who are unfamiliar with this card, basically this card uh, is essentially uh, Imperm. But the way this works is uh, every time you like negate a monster effect, death combined creation loses a thousand attack. And this card is kind of interesting because it, it, the other note is it only uh, negates monsters on the field. The last effect is uh, monsters your opponent controls can only attack your memento monsters and they're forced to attack your memento monsters. So if the combat creation has enough attack, or if you have bone back, which is another card that uh, we're going to talk about later, uh, you can just make it so your opponent just crashes their entire board into your combat creation. Very similar to how Nightmare Pain works in the Jubel strategy. So we negate the Trap Tricks, we negate the Rika, they summon the Link Rika, they're at the um so my opponent uh misplayed uh you can tell that they're new to the Rika deck the way uh Jory Tokage works for those who don't know about this card this card can discard one card to target one face of monster that isn't plant insect or reptile and uh return it to the hand uh but it is a field effect and they're trying to do it from the graveyard I corrected by saying it actually works on the field. They try to do the effect. We just negate again. So that's three negations already. They summon the link monster. And that's game. Uh, yeah, so the combined creation setup with uh, the combined creation is just a little bit too absurd. It's basically like uh, how skill drain works. And you just keep negating monster effects left and right. So our Rekka opponent is going first, they summon uh, Mermelio, they add Holtea, they activate Holtea, they activate uh, Serra, uh, Mermelio's mandatory effect triggers, will, will, which will trigger Serra to just set another Holtea. They go into King of the Feral Limbs, Feral Limbs will add uh, Tokage, we banish Mermelio for Tokage, we special 
back the memory level back into the deck uh, just for Kamakiri. That's why he wasn't afraid to add another Mimaleo. With a link into Dokuro. For those who don't know, Dokuro can special summon a Raika from your graveyard. And the second effect of Dokuro, which is the same effect every Raika monster has, you can target an insect, plant, or reptile, place it at the bottom of your deck, and if you do, you special summon this card. So they now link it to a link three. Uh, the camera carry triggers because the camera carry hit the graveyard. You can special summon a level four or lower plant, insect, or reptile. So essentially, they'll just summon back the Mermilio. Mermilio gets summoned. And now uh, they're going to trigger Uga Minuchi. In Uga Minuchi, what it does is you banish from the graveyard, which they're banishing these two. Uh, and if it resolves, it adds a Raika. Uh, trap card, specifically a Raika trap card. Uh, this is Daring Kobikumari. Uh, to summarize, this card pops cards up to the number of insect plant reptiles, they, which are different types. So this can essentially pop up to three cards. The other effect, which is the graveyard effect, is if a monster is destroyed while well, this card is in the graveyard, uh, you can banish this card from the graveyard and just pop one monster I control. So they reborn back the Dokoro, they summon Jasmine, they're doing Jasmine's effect. Jasmine is going to summon uh, Purika. Purika is going to be linked away into Sarah. And both Jasmine and Ogaminushi are going to be linked away into a Dioga. For those who don't know, uh, what this card, the, what this one does is if it, if a monster is special summoned from the extra deck or the main deck, uh, this can essentially just pop two monsters on field. Uh, it does not target and it can pop any two monsters, including their own. We normal maze, maze triggers, we have to, we grab the Saturn Shigo. We have the Mementoglian, we special the uh, Satsuno Shigo. Uh, they flip the Daring here, and Daring is going to pop Satsuno Shigo and the Field Spell, which is not a bad play. Basically, they're trying to eliminate our setup. However, from then doing that, we can trigger a uh, Memento uh, Bone Back. So, I'm going to talk about this card. This card is not commonly seen in me Memento builds. Some Memento decks don't even play this card. Uh, essentially, what this card does is, if a Memento leaves the field because of our opponent's card, this can summon the combined creation. The other effect that it has is, if your opponent moves a Memento from your graveyard, while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this and special as many Mementos from your hand or deck. So, essentially, what this card is made for is... To just contest against your opponent's interruptions, it basically punishes them from interrupting your cards too early or just interrupting your mementos in general. So, and I feel like in a format, or let let me let me reiterate that, uh, I feel like the less people who know about this deck are the more most amount of people who will fall victim to this card, because. Uh, not many people like will know how memento works so whenever they see like a memento trying to set up they will try to interrupt them and that's just the perfect avenue for this card so this will summon the chroma creation they trigger sarah because a trap uh normal trap was activated and now we summon the combined creation they activate dioga's effect to pop the creation as well as the arachnocampa uh, we trigger the combined creations effect in chain, uh, special summoning the Tatsuno Shigo. Uh, so uh, this is one misplay that our opponent did. Uh, I guess I'll explain it. The Dioga does not target. So after like resolving the combined creations effect, they could just pop the two Memento monsters that I control and not pop the Arachno Kampa. So if you are playing the Raika deck and you fall into this scenario right here, uh, just take note, uh, Dioga does not target. So you can just pop as many monsters that just spawn into the field after the chain resolves.
oh well the change is resolving so uh that's one really big misplay that my opponent did and it will cost them the game because now uh we try to trigger such an ego they try to activate Dyrin's effect this is another misplay so uh if you read uh Dyrin, it says accept the turn it was sent there meaning that you cannot use both field or and graveyard effect at the same turn uh however if you do have like a Dyrin in your fit in, in your spell and trap zone and you already had a Dyrin in your graveyard you can essentially activate both effects because you can use each effect once per turn however you cannot use it while this card uh in during the turn it falls into a graveyard it's very similar to uh how welcome labyrinth works on that regard so uh we correct them on that they tried to use holtea they use holtea to summon purika uh the purika is going to trigger and in chain to purika's effect we activate the mementolium fusion so uh, since a monster was destroyed this turn, uh, the Mementolium Fusion can shuffle materials from the graveyard uh, into the deck in order to fusion summon. So we're going to fuse away the Tachyon Shigo, we're going to fuse away the Maze, and that gives us the Twin Dragon. Uh, Twin Dragon is going to pop itself uh, to add Gatic and Goblin. This does have a greater effect to special summon a monster. However, uh, we only had the combined creation. Uh, in hindsight, this is technically a misplay because w instead of like returning uh, like one of the monsters, I think it was Goblin that was in the graveyard. Uh, it was Mace. As not, instead of uh, returning the maze to the graveyard, what we could have done is return the combined creation and then the twin dragon had a free summon for the maze. So with that in mind, we activate prosperity, prosperity uh, triggers, we add super polymerization, and you probably noticed it, but there is uh, two plants and an insect, there are earth attributes, we activate talent, we activate uh, super poly. These are both plant earth plants. So we summon uh, the Garuda. Uh, sadly, this is not game because we did activate prosperity and this is not AK. Uh, however, uh, so there are two plants in motion that I had. Uh, the first plant was turn this into Typhon. I am playing Typhon in this effect. Uh, and I not re I don't recall it being banished. Nope, it is. it was not. Uh, the other thing that you can do is uh, do the play that I'm doing. However, the issue with that is you already activated Prosperity, so the Garura does not uh, draw you one card. So we activate the Dark. The Dark grabs the Tokage. And this turns into SP Little Knight. Uh, this is another misplay. You, only, you, you, didn't, you didn't need to go to extra steps for that. All you needed to do is just link away the Garura and... Uh, the link monster so we banished the Holtea and we passed and now they summon Mantis Mantis triggers Mantis grabs Dionea and this is one cool trick that uh, the trap tricks deck can do uh, they did not do that play uh, specifically however uh, I will explain it if you run multiple Mantis in your deck you essentially have an infinite loop for your Rika monsters because what you can end up doing is you can grab an extra copy of Mantis. With the Mantis that is on board, you shuffle it back into your deck to just special like one of your Rikas. And then every single turn, you have a free resource for your Link Monsters. Because what you're doing is you're just putting back Mantis every single turn. And you just keep resummoning Mantis and, re and re uh, regaining more Mantises. Uh, I also did a misplay when they activated Mantis effect. I should have just activated SP Little Knight and just banished the Mantis because they already wasted their normal summon. And unless they had Trap Threat Garden or they play um, the Morganite spell, uh, they don't have any more free summons outside of the second copy of Kamikari, which we didn't know he ha they had because uh, they already had uh, Kamikari already banished. Uh, into the graveyard so 
Now they're going to activate uh, the Uga Minushi. We're going to chain SP Little Knight. Uh, so that was trigger. Uh, the Uga Minushi does not resolve, so it stays in graveyard. Now what they're at, now they're activating Dokuro. So Dokuro is going to bring uh, bring itself back. Uh, this goes back to the bottom of the deck. I correct them on that. Uh, with Dokuro's effect, they bring back the Tokage. And then the Tokage can spin itself back. And then they summon back uh, Dioga. So this is another really cool trick there behind Raikas. Like, uh, and this is another reason why I feel like uh, Raikas are just made for trap tricks. One issue that trap tricks had uh, in the past is like taking away their resources and just like forcing them into the grind game. Uh, trap tricks are not really good at the grind game themselves. They're good at simplifying the game state with their trap cards. Uh, however, with the access to their Raikas and also access to like Holtea, which uh, they don't have because they already wasted uh, both of them. They have a lot of recursive resources that yeah, they can just keep using uh, in order to like s sustain advantage. So uh, they only attack with Dokuro. I don't know why they, uh, they couldn't attack with Dioga. But now I draw into Tachon Shigo. I normaled the Gatic. I tried to do Gatic's effect to grab Mementolium Fusion. The reason I do that is because uh, my plan of action is returning the Twin Dragon in order to like uh, resummon uh, something else and then use the Mementolium Fusion in order to just resummon the Twin Dragon. Uh, I tried to do that, but they had Ash Blossom. So now we have the Mementolium Fusion. We summoned uh, Chimera. So one th really cool thing about this deck is Gatic is a Fiend and Tatsunoshigo is uh, a Beast Monster. And Mementolium Fusion can let you Fusion Summon for anything as long as you're using Mementos as materials or at least one Memento Monster as material. And since these two mementos fill the condition for the Chimera King, you can essentially just summon the Chimera King. Uh, another really cool thing is that the Chimera King can bring back uh, either Tatsunoshigo or Gatic uh, with its effect, uh, its graveyard effect. And resummoning Gatic means Gatic can just grab from the graveyard and slowly but surely you're recouping in card advantage. If your opponent tries to contest that play by like banishing Gatic from the graveyard, this falls into like playing into Boneback, which makes it so Boneback can just punish them and just resummon like a lot of Memento monsters. So it's not a foolproof strategy, but it is a strategy for sure. Uh, what we end up doing is. Oh, so. Now, now I understand. Okay, so we're reversing the game state because we both forgot about SP Little Knight uh, banishing the Trap Tricks, meaning that the Tatsun Shigo couldn't uh, be summoned as well as the Gatic. So knowing that they had Ash Blossom, my plan of action is activating Mementolium Fusion. And if that resolves, then we have another game plan. Uh, so they take the bait. They activate the Ash Blossom. If the Mementolium Fusion uh, resolved, we would have just grabbed another one. But since they Ash Blossomed, we're going to Tribute Summon for Tatsuno Shigo. Tatsuno Shigo is going to trigger. We're going to send uh, these two mementos into the graveyard. Uh, for those who... Uh, because I, I have seen people misunderstand this effect. Uh, you can send up to the level, not exactly the level. So 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 is less, less than 5, so you can actually do it. So now we have 5 mementos in graveyard. So we can just shuffle all of them back. And we can summon the combined creation. Uh, so combined creation attacks here. I ta uh, He takes uh, 35. So this is uh, one scenario that I'm going to bring up. 
we should have lost this duel. And the reason why we should have lost is because uh, the Dairin can banish itself from the graveyard even if monsters were destroyed by battle. Meaning that just running over the Mantis would have triggered the Dairin. The Dairin would have popped my combined creation and I would have been left with no place and they would have attacked less uh, the next turn for game. Uh, that did not happen. So what essentially ended up happening is we just ended up uh, in this scenario that we just attacked over here for 34 and we just won. But essentially this duel should have been won by the Rika player and we should have uh, gotten to game three. Uh, the whole purpose behind this uh, recording is for you to learn and understand these decks because even though these are rogue decks, these are not decks that are very popular in the format, you will encounter them sometime uh, in the future. And if you're not ready for them, uh, they're pretty much just going to win uh, like the War of Attrition because these decks are fairly decent at what they do. Their ceiling are, are not incredibly high, but they do play enough cards in order to like uh, have a solidified game plan that can fit well into this format. But yeah, uh, this is the end of the duel. Uh, I hope you found this video informative and to your liking and understanding. Uh, more Legacy of Destruction content coming soon. Uh, keep practicing and keep dueling.